I work with a few charities and most of these charities have the same vision, which is to help underprivileged children. One of the charities that I work for and I feel very passionate about is a charity called Chi Hang Foundation. And another charity that I'm involved with is a charity called Save the Children. The ESF gave me a wonderful education. It also let me know how important education is. And so for me, I think to work with charities to help give children a better education so that they could have a better future is one of the, the main missions of my charity works. I'm the CEO at Mother's Choice. Uh, so before I joined Mother's Choice, I was actually a corporate lawyer. I went to the United States for college and for law school. I started my career as a lawyer there. Mother's Choice is a local charity that was set up here in Hong Kong. When I joined Bradbury in primary three, I came painfully shy. I really lacked confidence. I was really unable to speak in public. I was really quiet. ESF is really about family and community. And I think that's what resonates with me even now, uh, so many years later. My family is so important to me, and I feel like I have been given opportunities because I grew up in a loving family. And my six younger siblings and I, we all attended Bradbury and South Island School. And it's incredible to see the family and community that runs through all of the ESF schools and the support that they provide to so many, and not just to my family, but to us at Mother's Choice, where our dream is really to see every child growing up in a loving family. Well, I'm Christine Lowe. I'm the Under Secretary for the Environment in the Hong Kong SAR government, so my work essentially deals with policy making in the environmental area in Hong Kong. I came to Island School I think in the second or third year after it opened. I had a wonderful time, I made wonderful friends and I still remember many of the teachers that I had from the earliest days. What I enjoyed about Island School in my days was that it was very multicultural. I think when I was here uh, what I realized, the fact that I wasn't very good at school, but there were lots of other activities. I really blossomed in sports, I really blossomed in organizing activities at the school. So for me, it was a great moment to realize that it wasn't all about academics, that a lot of other things were also very important in my school life, in my own happiness, and actually it's uh, stood me in very good stead later on in life. I'm Alan Siho. I am now a clinical associate professor at the University of Hong Kong, and I'm a thoracic surgeon, which means I operate on lungs. And I was here in KG5 throughout my secondary school life. The great thing about it is that you're here with friends. You make the best friends in your life here in school. What KG5 gave us, the right kind of environment for you to pursue uh, whatever you've already decided to do. What KG5 gave me was very supportive people all around you. You have friends who would discuss with you what they think, what they want to do. You have teachers who are, again, very supportive and very open to giving you advice. It was fantastic at that time. Hi, I'm Jeffrey Chia. I was West Island School class of 2008. And this summer, I accomplished one of my childhood dreams, uh, going to the Olympic Games in Brazil. I competed in the 50 freestyle which has been my best event this year, and I have been swimming my whole life. So pursuing my lifelong passion of swimming has been a real exciting time for me. The friendships that I've maintained from, from school here are, I, I doubt, they're going to last a lifetime. They're, the people that you meet here are wonderful people, and I'm really lucky to have had that experience. I would say take what you learn at school to the best of your ability, but really apply yourselves outside of the classroom as well. Um, my name is Marin Minamia. I used to study at South Island School, and now I am a university student at Waseda University in Tokyo. When I was 17, I came up with the Seven Summits um, project, and I completed this challenge this year, July 4th and I joined um, Hong Kong Awards for Youth Program. And there, I started climbing mountains with my friends with analog maps and compasses, and that's how I got into climbing mountains. Back in 2012, I went on a trip to Kenya with my friends, 
from South Island School to renovate an orphanage and get to know what life is actually like over there and try to make a difference and an impact to their lives. And these were the differences that we tried to make and the teachers really encouraged us students to do. And this is a emotion and, and um, a passion that still lives on within me even now. I'm Damian, so recently we just finished filming the second series of uh, my traveling cooking show. So we traveled along the Silk Road from Xinjiang, we went from Ulumuxi uh, all the way down and into Xi'an and did six episodes uh, focusing mainly on foods that use different flowers. Flower being F-L-O-U-R. Then basically all the way through learning Chinese I also kept up an interest in cooking. And then once I graduated I decided to combine cooking and language skills and created a career from that. I think one student was being very unclear, right? and the teacher said, well, try again, you were not being clear. And the student got frustrated and said, well, I said what I said. And the teacher said to all of us, if the person who's listening to you doesn't understand what you're saying, it's not that the other person is stupid, it's that you have not been clear enough, so try again. And you know, that piece of advice I've taken to heart, and I completely believe that it's our job to be clear. And finally, something that we've learned by working with children with families here in Hong Kong is that it takes a village to raise a child. Nobody can do it by themselves. And that sense of community that we experienced in ESF, we really want that for every child in Hong Kong. The sooner you can get used to learning on your own, because you're going to have to learn that at university anyway, uh, the better. And that means, you know, if there's something that is taught in class that you don't quite understand, get used to asking your teacher for help, uh, get used to doing your own research online, and, um, or finding other source materials, textbooks, books, in libraries, whatever they may be, and use them to your advantage. Well, I would like to say that just don't be afraid to ha take a step forward and know that life is full of opportunities and it's up to you to take it or not to make it your own. And there are so many people around you that's supporting you. And if there's anything that you feel that is getting in your way, just remember that you are the only one that's getting in your way to getting to your dream. Saying yes to opportunities that arise as well, I think that's important. I try and say yes more than no. I try and put myself in as many situations, sometimes compromising, uh, but hopefully leading to you know, where I want to be and then having the language skills. I think when you get to my age and you look back, you know, school was too short and I wish I had done more of this. I wish I'd done more of that or explored a bit more of that. So I think if I went back and talked to a teenage version of myself, I would say, whoa, listen up. Six, seven years of your life is very short. Make every minute count. You know, spend the time with your friends. You know, enjoy that time. Talk to everybody around you, the staff, the teachers. Make sure you get every bit of wisdom out of them. What you pick at high school is actually very important as well because you kind of sort of build a foundation there, the subjects that you, you pick, and then you kind of build onto it at university and then you go and pursue your career. So you've got to be very careful in what you pick, but definitely choose subjects that you feel interested in or passionate about, and I'm sure you know, you'll do well from there.